You know, one of the surprising aspects of Leave No Trace is to be prepared. If you were to get hurt and require rescue, um, the resources that it would take and the amount of people would actually do a significant amount of damage on the landscape. So being prepared is one of the principal uh, tenets of leaving no trace. What that means is being prepared for the weather, having adequate food, we're making our lunch today, having adequate water, um, and just being prepared, uh, having checked the weather, all those types of things that go into having a safe trip is actually an important aspect of leave no trace ethics. One of the principles of Leave No Trace is the travel and camp on hard, durable surfaces. Well, we've been hiking on a pretty hard trail uh, to get to our camp spot, and now we found a good spot that is uh, made up of small gravel and dirt. There's not a lot of plants, so we're not gonna leave very much of an impact by camping in this location. Traveling on Durable surfaces is an important aspect of leave no trace. And people often think, well, that's pretty simple. Just stay on the trail. But there's more than to it than that. You can't always just stay on the trail. There are certain times where you do find yourself off the trail. And what we're trying to say here is to leave as little impact as possible. So if you do need to go off trail, stay on durable things like rocks, hard packed soils. You want to stay off of places like meadows and cryptobiotic soil. Places where your impact will be left for a long time. Or places where you may cause erosion by leaving a footprint in mud or something like that. Disposing of waste properly is another important part of leave no trace ethics. Unfortunately, that doesn't just mean packing in and packing out all your trash and all. That also means human waste. So the best way to do that is take a trowel with you, dig a hole uh, 8 to 12 inches deep, uh, do what you need to do in the hole, and then cover it up. Unfortunately, in some instances, in some types of wilderness situations, like canyon bottoms, caves, other more sensitive areas, you may need to actually pack everything out. It's gross, but it helps the environment. A few years ago, some good intentioned people donated this fossilized bone to us. The problem is we have no idea where it came from. So if we don't know where it came from, there's very little that we can tell about it. Is it a dinosaur bone? Kind of tough to tell. So this brings us to an important part of Leave No Trace, and that is leave what you find. Not only do we want the people that come behind us to have the same experience that we did in nature, but also leaving things in their proper area gives us a provenance, tells us a little bit more of the story about that particular artifact. This fossil in front of us was meticulously mapped and labeled and uh, described. So we were able to learn a great deal about the creatures that are represented here. We know that they died um, in a muddy area. We know that they were washed together and, and pushed down a river, all because of their provenance was maintained. If these bones had just been picked up and moved, we wouldn't have been able to learn that. So Leave No Trace tells us, leave what you find.
So when we're trying to hike and, and camp in the backcountry and leave no trace, one of the biggest problems that we would have is how to cook. Because a lot of people on a backpacking trip would say, well, making a fire at night would only take a lighter, and that's the lightest thing you can carry. Why would you want to carry a stove? Well, the reason we carry a stove is because we want to leave no trace. If we build a fire, no matter what we do, we're having an impact. So it's much easier, even though it's a little bit heavier, to just use our stove and a pot and just cook, because that will have almost no impact on the environment. When traveling in the backcountry, remember that this is the animal's home. Be respectful. Be quiet. Don't try and scare the animals. Give them plenty of room if you do encounter them. Don't try and block their access to water or anything else they need. Remember, they're going to be very apprehensive and scared if they encounter you. So just be careful, be quiet, and respectful. Today's hike has us on the Osha Spring Trail, which is one of the most remote uh, spots in the Sandia Mountains. We are far from anybody, way out. And we got some great views. This is one of those trails that people come and take for solitude, which brings me to another one of our Leave No Trace principles. And that is to try not to impact the other people that are out here. And what we mean by that is not yelling, not screaming, uh, not playing music, things like that. People come out to the woods uh, for solitude and peace and quiet, and those sorts of things can be very disruptive. Some people even take this uh, part of Leave No Trace to even mean wearing muted clothing so you're not seen as well. That might be taking it a little bit too far, but it's an important thing to remember that you're not always alone, even if you want to be, and to allow other people to have the same quiet experience that you are.